Today I'm at the Niagara Butterfly Conservatory. I followed my GPS here, ended up in the wrong parking lot, but someone was nice enough to let me park in the employee spot. So this is where I am and it is a very cold day again. It's supposed to be cold all week and it's supposed to be a little bit warmer next week. Now the Butterfly Conservatory, from what I've heard, is actually a very nice, somewhat more tropical environment. And I'm looking forward to this. Even though I grew up in Canada, I was born in Barbados and I must tell you, I really do enjoy the tropical, um, someone's coming, the tropical climate. So anyway, I'm going and I'm going to see if I can get some beautiful butterfly pictures. And then after that, I'm going to head out and see if I can get some really nice cold winter pictures um, in the area of Niagara Falls that I'm at. Okay, see you inside. I'm back. So it was way too busy in there for me to take video while I was doing my shoot. So unfortunately you guys don't get to see that. However, it was really cool. There were lots of beautiful butterflies. They were flying all over the place. As you can imagine, it was a butterfly conservatory. But here's the question. Do you think it's cheating to take photos at a wildlife conservatory or a zoo? Here's my opinion, okay? I don't think it's cheating. I think it's definitely easier in some regards, but there are also challenges and you still need to be prepared and taking your photos and using your skills as a photographer to get a shot that you actually like. Um, so at the Butterfly Conservatory, for example, there were a lot of people there. So one, I had to avoid people and two, it was very, very, very hot and steamy. So I would not have gotten through that shoot without a lens cloth. I was constantly using that. And in the end, I kind of just put it away and gave up because it was, it was kind of crazy hot in there. 
three, the butterflies were very, very quick and they were flying around all over the place, up, down, all over, like even landing on my camera and my tripod and everything. And so wildlife shoot, unless you've got a sedated animal in a very, very controlled environment, uh, usually zoos nowadays have them in uh, a more like their natural setting even though it's contained and it's smaller uh, you still need to get the right angle on the animal you need to get close enough you need to capture them in with the right expression you know they I know they're animals and they don't necessarily have human expressions but they still have expression and you still want to get a, an image that has emotion that has a, a message something to say when you're when your viewers are looking at it. So that's still something that you're gonna have to do. And sometimes maybe in a controlled environment, it, I mean, it might be more difficult because, you know, like in a zoo, you've got, if it's that kind of zoo, you have cages, you have um, very small spaces to work around. You're very confined to where you are. So, I mean, that is one challenge. And then the other thing with the butterflies was that the conservatory is in a big greenhouse and there's uh, lots of tropical plants and so it's indoors and the butterflies are very quick and there's not really that much light. So I could have hiked up my ISO very high to try and capture some of the butterflies flying around, but I don't really think there was enough light for that. I mean, I was, I would have been looking at ISO 3200, maybe 6400, just to get them, um, just to get them while they're moving. And even then, I think they still would have been a bit blurry. The other thing is that I wanted to increase my f-stop because I wanted to get a slightly larger depth of field because I didn't want to have like part of the butterfly in focus and then say the end of its wing out of focus. Now if the butterfly was straight on then that's not really a problem but a lot of times the butterflies may be on an angle and um, part of the wing is maybe like if I was using my uh, 70 to 300 lens and I was at 300 and I was trying to get a close-up of this butterfly and the back of his wing here was on uh, a closer plane than his head. I needed to increase my uh, my aperture to be able to capture it all in um, in sharp detail. So that was another thing and doing that also means I would have needed to have more light. So what I did was I brought my 70 to 300 and I brought my 24 to 70 as well and I did use both but mostly the 70 to 300. I set up my camera on my tripod and I basically just carried my tripod around in this little greenhouse and captured whichever butterflies that were being cooperative and kind and posing for me. Um, it was fun. It was really fun. And now I'm going to go see if I like my images and I will post them for you. And I'm just going to post a couple other pictures that I've taken in controlled environments. And then um, and I'm planning to actually head out to Algonquin Park and do a little bit more of the real wildlife photography soon. So uh, stay tuned for that. And if you like my videos, please like and subscribe. And if you have an opinion on the wildlife sanctuary zoo versus out in the wild um, and whether it's cheating or not, please leave a comment below and uh, yeah, and we can chat. Okay. So have a great day guys and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.
I forgot to mention, I was going to go out and do an outdoor landscape shoot in Niagara after the Butterfly Conservatory, but it was so hot and humid in there that I didn't think it would have been wise to go out and spend some time then in our minus 20, minus 30 degree weather today. Um, safety first, guys, like if you're um, sweaty or hot and then you head out to, sorry, my neighbor, and then you head out to uh, a cold environment, you're gonna freeze, okay? Don't do that. See you later.